Firebuster is my tool of choice when I need to brute force an API endpoint or web directories. Um, it's tagline, simple, fast, recursive. That's exactly why I love it. Um, it's actively maintained. Um, Epi is constantly improving it, which is awesome. And uh, if you, when I tip them off a bug, you know, bug that I find, you know, days later, there's a new version up that fixes the bug. Um, today, I'm going to look at just three quick things that have updated in it recently. Um, one being the update functionality itself. Uh, the next being a look at how it filters and a big improvement there that I'm really excited about. And then just uh, showing a quick bug fix that uh, I found while solving the mentor box from Hack the Box and that uh, Epi got fixed in a couple days. So hopefully it'll be fun. Uh, let's dive in. All right, so some quick background on Ferrobuster. This is the tool I go to when I want to brute force directories, endpoints, paths on a web server. Um, so basically, we're just going to take a word list and try each of them as paths on a web server and see if we find anything. And if we do find something, Ferrobuster is actually going to recurse into that as a directory and keep trying more. Um, in fact, we can scroll down here a little bit in their logo, right? It's They say simple, fast, recursive. Like That's exactly the things I like about it and why I like to use it over, um, let's, let's be honest, a ton of alternatives that are out there. Um, GoBuster is great. Um, uh, Durbuster is great. It's, it's good. Um, so. This is written in Rust. It's very fast. It's simple. Um, it's what I like to use. Um, you can install this from uh, the Kali repos if you're using Kali with apt, um, or you can, uh, what, what I like to do is just get the latest release here from releases. Um, I'm curious, actually, let's see, you know, we're at 2.91. If we do Kali repo, Barrow Buster, let's see what we're going to get here in Kali. So yeah, they're 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 putting out version two two seven three right now, which is uh, ways down here. Not that that's so December twenty nine. So it's like pretty up to date. But if you want to be up to date, you grab the newest one from here. And we're going to talk about some of the benefits of these newest ones here. Um, and uh, you know, but we can see it does update frequently here. So this one's two days ago, um, last week, two weeks ago, right? So it's like Epi is working on this thing. Um, Epi is one of the main developers and. Uh, He's very open to feedback, and if you find a bug, like, he works and gets it fixed. And this is all a good thing. You want an active tool that like is getting love. Um, so, let's. The other thing that's really cool that just is in the newest version here is this very top one: implement auto update feature. And basically, what they've done now is you can run Ferrobuster dash dash update, and it will download in place a newer version if there is one, and just like overwrite the current binary with a newer one. Um, and this is really cool because. Um, the big downside to downloading out of the releases here was that um, you have to remember to go check GitHub periodically for new features. And so presumably you're running apt update periodically already, so that was a benefit. Now um, you can just remember to, you know, Ferrobuster update maybe before you start working on a box or um, make it a cron job. Um, I actually asked Epi about this, if it could be done without um, inter user interaction. And he said, uh, you know, you do have to hit Y to confirm you want to update, but you could, if you really wanted to live on the edge, you could echo Y pipe, you know, pipe into Ferrobuster dash update and you'd get it. So um, you could run this nightly and just always have the latest version. Um, so let's do a little bit of demo. That was, that was the first of the three features. I think the update flag is super cool. Uh, now, so I've got um, two versions of Ferrobuster I downloaded here, 273 and 291. Um, 273 is actually what I was using when I solved Mentor. Um, it's the box that, uh, my post went up on Hack the Box last weekend, a couple days ago, um, and it had some of the issues that we'll run into, and it's a great example. We'll use it in this example to, uh, in this video, to show the examples of some of the new features slash bug fixes. Um, general Ferrobuster stuff, I'm going to do, if I do Ferrobuster, um, I don't necessarily recommend, I've just got them local here. You can drop them in like a local, um, somewhere that's in your path, so you can just run these, and then you don't have to keep the version number and the name. I just did, did that for the sake of this video. Um, you know, if I run... Ferrobuster. I don't even know what version number I've got is my latest. Um, 2.8. So I actually need to update. In fact, I will update that as soon as after this video. Um, but for the sake of uh, demonstration here, if we do to uh, Ferrobuster, the local version, or this the one in this folder, 2.7.3, and then we'll give it a URL to scan. So we'll do like HTTP. Uh, and then for the mentor box, I'm sorry if I'm spoiling the mentor box for anyone here, but um, you know nothing too big. Uh, we do mentor quotes at HTTP and we run it. And the first thing we want to look at is like all, you know, I just passed it literally URL and nothing else. And so the rest of this stuff kind of gets set by default. Um, you know, I passed it the URL, the number of threads is 50. Um, the word list is set by default. Now you can change this very easily, um, but I love that it's set by default and it's set to one I use regularly. 
um, it is going to look in user share sec lists. Um, if you use Kali, I think that's where it lands by default, but like I um, drop sec list into, I believe it's into op. Yeah, so I've saved just clone mine into op on my Ubuntu system. So what I do is I do uh, ls minus l uh, user share, and we'll just see it back. And if we find sec list, oh, we'll, just, we'll just do a grep here. Um, grep sec lists. So you can see I just created in my user share directory a shortcut that uh, a symbolic link that points from secklist to op secklist, and that just gets me into that directory. Um, so you can handle that however you want, but that's just how I do it. Hey, sorry for the rough cut in here, but after recording this whole video and talking to Epi, he said, you know, that's a neat trick with your symbolic link, but you know, you can just configure it the intended way, right? And so I figured I'd at least cut in here and quickly show that um, we can create an Etsy Faro Buster directory. And inside of that, we're going to put a pharaohconfig.toml file. Um, and you can configure all sorts of stuff associated with that, but this will be the global configuration for uh, my any instance of pharaohbuster. And so in this case, I'm specifying the word list is equal to and giving it the actual path to the word list. No need for symbolic links. And now, and I, I don't need to I don't need to write this file. I can just quit. Uh, now, when I run, uh, this is from the local one here, pharaohbuster29. Uh, HTTP mentor quotes dot hack the box. Uh, you can see right now the word list it's using without any the default word list is that path. Um, now, Epi's got a whole Twitter thread, which I'll include in the description below on all the different configuration options and all the different like per user options. And but there's all sorts of cool things you can do. Um, for me, I'm just going to set my global word list in what in the Etsy folder. So um, anyway, that quick tangent there. Um, status codes. We're going to talk more about this. This is actually part of the next feature, but these are the codes that by default, it's going to identify. If you get one of these codes back, you might want to know about it. Um, so you can see already, we got a 403 back on the server status thing. That's kind of a standard Apache thing. Um, and that was because it matched one of these codes. Um, timeout, uh, user agent, uh, the methods we're going to try. A lot of times if I'm trying an API, I might add post or if I'm being really thorough, like put and delete here as well. Um, recursion depth, is there a maximum depth I want to go to? Uh, it sets it to four by default. And then it's nice enough to tell me there is a new version available. Um, so we've taken a look at that. Um, let's try 2.9 and see what changed here. So we've got 2.9.1, and then we do U, and we'll just, uh, I always like to alt period to get the last um, the last word of the previous command. And so we can run this again. Oops, and let's see, we need that, we need that U there. Now if we run it, some things are different. So we're still the same URL, because I passed the same URL, same threads, um, same word list. All status codes. This is a, this is the feature. This is feature number two I wanted to talk about, and I think is really cool. Um, instead of saying I'm going to look for specific status codes, what it's going to really do is say it's going to try a bunch of random, a bunch of different things, and it's going to say I don't want the default case, right? So when you when I'm going to try, you know, I don't know how long this word list is. Like let's just say it's ten thousand words long. I'm going to try ten thousand different things. Nine hundred and ninety something of them or 10,000, 9,990 9, of them probably are not interesting, right? It's just, it just means there's nothing there. So I'm going to just send a bunch of junk at the thing, collect it back and sort of say, oh, okay, this is what the default case looks like. In this case, it found 404 like response. So now it's going to start filtering on 404s. And it's going to show me everything else. And this is actually what I'm looking for when I'm brute forcing a directory. So this is a really neat feature. Um, if you don't like this, you can turn it off with don't filter. Um, and then you can specify the code you want to put in there instead. Um, but I really like this, and we'll kill this here as an example. Um, we can go over to, uh, let's see, api.mentorquotes.hackthebox, and we'll add slash admin here. And let's see, we'll start we'll, we'll start by doing 273 here. So if we start like this, um, we are going to find very quickly this admin slash admin slash backup. And it's actually returning a 405, um, which is method, the wrong method. This me get, get requests are not allowed. Um, so I could try a post request and see what I get back. Um, in fact, maybe we do that. We say, okay, let's let's uh, methods and just make it post. And so now we don't we don't get back. In fact, I know we're past that in the list. Why do we not get backup? And before we did get check, which we didn't find before. Check was now we're getting a four or five on check. Um, and so this is now because it's the four or fives are getting found. That's at least nice enough that we I found the things I need to find. But like. Really, what's cool is, let's go back here to uh, and get rid of 703, make this 9. Now when I run it, because I'm getting all codes, I'm going to find the 405 on backup. Um, I'm going to get a 
422 on check. Um, so check is returning a 422, which has to, which I don't remember the exact terminology for 422, but it's basically like the parameters are not quite set right. Um, and it's not an uncommon thing to get back from APIs. So um, you could, maybe we should have added 422 to the default, but even better, why don't we just get everything that's not the default case? And so that's, this is a really nice example of this new feature. Um, the final thing I was gonna show in this quick video is um, there was a recursion bug in the early ones. And I think this is, I only mentioned this really because I put it in my blog post. I said, you know, you can't run it this way because of it. And Epi was so quick to go off and fix it. I wanna just show what happened. Um, if we come here and we run Fairbuster 273 on API mentor quote slash, huh? All of a sudden, like really quickly, it just flooded my screen. And so like, what's going on here? Um, and if we go back up to the top, page, paging up, paging up, there we go. Um, let's see. So, oops, okay, here's 273. Here we started running it. Now, very quickly, it identifies um, slash admins pointing to slash admin. That's not a big deal. Or sorry, slash admins pointing to admin slash admin slash. It doesn't really matter whether that trailing slash is there. Um, and here we get slash users points to slash users slash. Cool enough. The logic that Ferrobuster uses to say, like, should I recurse into something is if it ends in a slash or if it has if it's a redirect to some, to itself ending in a slash, then I should go into it. And it quickly detects that there is a wildcard. You can see it got a wildcard response here um, for this you know, just it sent junk into users and it got back something. Um, but it then still like by bug added it to the recursion list. And what we end up getting is basically everything in our word list. And then it's just going to spiral from there. And we're going to get a bunch of junk we don't want to see. Um, and so the cool, you know, I pointed this out to Epi and like three days later, he's like, oh yeah, I've, I've gotten this fixed now. It's, it, it works. And so we can run the newest version and boom, we, we, we hit that. Uh, let's see, where's slash users? Um, we hit users right here and we recognize that it's doing a redirect. Um, but, oh, here, and we have this wildcard dir right here when we're stopping, you know, we started going into it, but we said like, oh, we're not, we don't really want that. Like that's not um, what we want. It did find users add, it's, that, and that's even cooler now because it's like finding that there's, there's this wildcard thing for users, but then like when I do users add, it's actually running a 405. So I found a different endpoint that might've gotten lost before. That's all pretty cool. Ferrobuster is a neat tool. It's my my go-to for when I want to do uh, directory brute forcing on a web server. Um, I would recommend you check it out. Um, if you like one of the other tools better, that's awesome too. It's not like a, it's not like the best by any means. It's just sort of what I like to use. So um, go check it out. And uh, thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.